Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at the latest service update for FAX 2.5, namely 2.57.02. And the first thing that jumps into our eyes is the new Navier menu. Uh, I've slightly rearranged it. We have a low level submenu now, which is the usual submenu that you knew before. It was called the FAX. We have all the low level nodes in here to build our setups and have total control over what happens in the setups. And now we also have a high level nodes. These are kind of compound nodes, um, like collecting certain functionality into a certain, into a single node. But let's take a look at that. For example, if we take a look at a usual liquid setup, we have kind of uh, several nodes low level nodes that generate this setup for uh, a liquid emitter just emitting liquid particles and they're falling down due to gravity and hitting the walls of the container with the high level nodes let's just get rid of all of these low level nodes into the high level menu and for example, let's if we wanted to create that exact basic setup. What I would do now is let's just undock it, high level, go into dynamics, choose the flip liquid. That's the first one we see. And you can already see we have a lot more settings in this one than in the usual liquid dynamics node. And furthermore, we need a volume. Also here you can see that there is no mesh object anymore. And we have all the settings in here. And the last thing is we need a liquid particle emitter. Another high level node. So here we only have three nodes instead of all the other nodes, uh, low level nodes that we used to have in the basic setup. And they're actually doing exactly the same. So you're in the liquid particle emitter. I choose the volume, I choose target particle group and then we go here and that's about it. So I could just create that basic setup much faster now and have much more specialized nodes that take over the functionality of all the low level nodes and gather them into a single node. That's why it's a compound node. Or it, if you want so, it's a node group. And that's the same with all the other high level nodes. They're just gathering low level nodes and into a single node group. And that's also the new node that we have here in the low level menu, which is just called node group. And what it allows me to do is the following. Let's just create that basic setup again. Now I can go in here, put it into the scene. What I can do now is I have this volume which requires a mesh node that we have here. And that mesh node can take a Cinema 4D mesh object. So this mesh object of Cinema 4D is converted into the, our effects mesh node. And this mesh is then used in our volume node to generate, well, actually a volume out of that mesh. Now I can put this now in here and you can see that the effects nodes disappear. And now I have all that settings that were in the, in both these nodes, the mesh node and the volume node are now in here for the volume and the mesh. And also we have the ports which are gathered. If I have this one activated, if I deactivate it, they go back into the original node specific subgroup. But I want that of course, because I want to assign objects or other nodes pretty quickly. And so I know they're in the ports node now here. And that, that is already a great deal of help uh, when working with setups, you can collect complex setups and put them into one single node. We can also choose now a certain icon for this node group 
and this is usually the ones that are input as children here which is the volume or the mesh and as I want this to be a volume mesh uh, I choose the volume icon and it is shown in here now and uh, but what kind of bugs me is that I have this volume group and this mesh group and this ports group I don't want that also here is the same uh, although for the display I kind of like it so I would like to keep these subgroups so I have it more specific but in the parameters tab I would simply like to have you know not these subgroups they're kind of not necessary necessary with these few settings so and now we come to the next new thing which is the note styler with that we can also find in here note styler I could open it with that one but I can also simply double click on the note group so it will open up the note styler and I have all these settings that I find in here now have it in this tree view now and what I can do now is first of all I want to get rid of that subgroups and we have two columns here which is H and D which means hide and disable so I want to disable the ports group and let's take a look at here when I click on it there you go it disappears so it is disabled and the settings that were originally in that one are just transferred into the main parameters tab if we want so and I can do the same here with the volume and also with the mesh and you can see that it reduces down to nicely having it uh, linearly fashioned in our parameters tab now it's a great deal of course already and it really makes all the complex setups really really easy for you and for yourself or if you're giving it away to another one with effects he can walk through your setup much easier going through the OM hierarchy but there are some things that still bother me for example the center surface offset I would say okay it's not something that I use often or sweeping iterations or max CPUs for sweeping I usually keep them at their default settings so I want to get rid of them as well I could also click on them for disabling them like this but they're still cluttering the interface that way so what I do is I hide them you know just like this and get rid of them also that center is surface offset also no frame of obstacle it's a pretty special case so I get rid of that one as well the mesh object I always want it to be here of course of course the volume that I have in my original setup should always take a mesh node so I'll also get rid of that one like this and now all I do I need to do is uh, just you know just create a new mesh and I can simply drag it in here and all the setup work is done already and I only have these four settings for myself which are useful to me most of the time and if I ever wanted to have them back I just open up the note styler and you know just get them back like this but usually that's enough for me so reduce complexity very very great and of course I could do the same for the display tab like this I could also totally get rid of it if I don't need it if I never actually use it or you know just reducing complexity and styling my note customly uh, so that's a great way to do that and if I ever wanted to extend that one I could simply drop more nodes underneath just put it in there but what if I wanted to get rid of one of the nodes that are in there so I could simply click on reveal notes and it would show me the actual setup of the low level notes and I could now you know just get rid of that one maybe something that would that is uh, additionally useful and uh, whenever I have a setup for example let's use that particle group I just create a new node group like this get in here I put the weak spring also in here why not and just put them all there all right so they're all gathered in here again parameters you know got all the ports etc and all the other subgroups but for example the PP velocity well actually I don't want it to be in there you know but I don't want to get it out of of there either 
So what I can do is I reveal the notes again, right click go to Cinema 4D Tax and use the usual stop hierarchy tag, put it on it and that's all about it. Now it's not included anymore. So I can simply uh, exclude objects by adding that tag here, the stop tag of Cinema 4D. Well, and that's actually about it. And if I ever wanted to do that once again, I don't want to do it all over again. So I just call it mash volume like this, for example. And now I can click on create preset to create preset out of it. Actually, it's created. And I want to show you that. And we now have the categories here, dynamics, fourth grids, particles. What are these? Where do these groups actually come from? Well, these are the high level node menu groups like this one. So if I wanted to add a preset, it will be included here in the high level menu. And uh, this is a body. So I put it into bodies in here, right? Like that. And there you go. Now we have a mesh volume with the same typo that I had before. You know, it's just that simple. And maybe another thing, the last thing, you can also, if you create a preset, you can also create new categories for yourself. So let's create a new category and call it my lovely notes like that. And now we can see that in the high level, we have a subgroup now, which is called my lovely notes. And I could now just store my preset in that subgroup. There you go. And here, go there, and now we have it here, and I could open it all the time again. Now the settings are just the same, they're remembered, of course. So this is a pretty, 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 pretty cool way to uh, create presets and high-level notes. And last thing that just comes to my mind, and which I forgot actually to say, but which is a pretty cool feature as well, is just double-click again on it to get the note styler open. And uh, let's assume I don't want this to be named like that. So I could simply also rename any of these settings uh, just the way I want it. Outside extent, for example, voxels on the outside. There you go. So now it's called voxels on the outside. And because of that's much clearer to me, for example, it is not in that case, but <laughs> you get the point. So you have total control over uh, styling notes. You could also even style a single note. It's totally up to you. Reduce setup complexity for yourself or for anybody else using your scenes. So have fun with the latest service update and I promise there's more to come. Take care.